Hello everyone, I'm Brahm Mistra. Um, welcome back! <laughs> I've been gone for a while. It's been a while since I've been able to do a video. Um, there's reasons for that. I think it's almost been two weeks as of recording this right now. Hopefully I get it up before the two-week mark starts. I don't, I don't think so. But yeah, it's been a while. Um, unfortunately, um, I know last time the video last video I made, I said, again, the one that was two weeks ago, uh, I was dealing with some personal issues, which is was causing me delay. Uh, those are cons continuing to happen. Uh, I'm just going to be forward with it. Uh, my dad has been in and out of the hospital, so I have just not used my free time for recording and editing. Uh, and the way the world works now, you have to schedule appointments in advance for visitations. They don't just do open visitation anymore because of, you know, uh, you have to quarantine yourself off and all those things. So they don't have open visitations at hospitals. You have to schedule it in advance. So I have to make sure to schedule it on my free time. And that's just how I've decided to spend my free time. So I have not been using it to record videos. So that is why it's been taking me three, two or three weeks um, there's other stuff I have been doing on my free time, um, that, you know, when I obviously have available free time, um, like with the Discord, I've learned to play the Tabletop Simulator, I've explored Tabletop Simulator versions of Kingdom Death, so that was awesome, spend time, uh, doing stuff with, in the Discord talking to people, so, normally, with comments, uh, I use them from YouTube, but this, I've also had discussions on the Discord, so, um, Let's start with some of that stuff. There's a lot of comments to get to because it's been so long since I've done a video. So let's just gonna wrap some of that, a whole bunch of conversations, I'm just gonna bring them all together that's been happening. First and foremost, I wanna start off with uh, my opinions on Endgame, which I gave a couple settlement events back. That, um, in there, I talked about the Lion God, which, okay, to be fair, I overestimated it. I, I don't play the Lion God very often. You only fight him once or twice. That's a problem with the Lion God, and it's still a valid criticism of the Lion God. Um, there's no reason to fight the level 3 Lion God because his rewards are so bad. What I grossly estimated was his ability to kill people. Um, he doesn't have a card that will draw instantly kill monster level survivors. But he does still have a card that is almost impossible to not get instantly killed on and because of his traits for level three uh people are always considered targets even if they're not in his uh line of sight people are cons are all of his cards are given relentless so i don't want to get into too much of the lion god's ways i talked about it on the discord to talk about it with the other people so you know people who have played lion god there's a lot of rules that he has that aren't in any of these other games which i don't ex haven't explored and i want to explain them now because it takes a while and his fight is very unique. But either way, I, gro I grossly overestimated his severity of death. Um, however, even dodging that auto-kill, which he does have, he has an auto-kill, and 99.9% .9 of the time, that's going to be an auto-kill. I have learned that there are ways to avoid it, but avoiding that requires it like a disorder so someone has some way of getting priority target onto somebody the very first when the hunts or when the showdown even starts someone has to have priority target you can get it through disorders or you can get it through uh fighting arts i think either way you'd have to be able to garner someone priority target so they'll be the one that gets it and then you have to have a way of having them start out of his movement which would be through like the boss mahendi there's there are ways to avoid it, but the prep that goes into that is cr really crazy. <laughs> so, again, I was my estimation of Vine. I was unfair. So, just take that with a grain of salt. I was I'm salty about the Lion God because he is very strong, and that card, that AI card, is almost impossible to dodge unless you have specific disorders and specific gear to dodge it. And like I said, the gear. And I use an example, is not gear that you'd be using to fight anything else. <laughs> so, and, oh, and his level 3 reward is terrible. No one's ever going to convince me that his level 3 reward is worth it. 
for a level 3. The level 1 reward is what you'd actually want. The level 1 reward is actually good. The level 3 is not good at all. It's really bad. <laughs> I do stand by that. The reasons for fighting him would be bad. Um, but with that said, the, transfer into another... Uh, some of the other comments that we've had. Um, yeah, I, so in the last showdown, uh, Blue Savior died, and people pointed out I could have 100% avoided that. That is 100% true. I could have avoided it. The uh, the time at which there are breaks in the AI card, I could have avoided it. Again, uh, I don't think I'm the best, most amazing player at this game. I think I'm all right. <laughs> I've... I can usually get to the Gold Smoke Knight every time um, I play, or you know, before that, before he was introduced, you know, beating the Watcher was no problem. But so I don't, I don't think I'm the best at this game. I just don't think I'm the worst, <laughs> and I don't find the game to be overly punishingly difficult to the point of it's being unplayable. So I must have my skill level for this game must be above that, or I have a very high tolerance for BS. <laughs> Maybe I just have a really high tolerance. But, um, yeah, people pointed out there are ways I could have avoided it. I could have avoided the Blue Savior's death, um, so I played unoptimally. Um, that, and that carries over to the other points that have been brought up in my comment section. I don't play 100% optimally. Um, sometimes I, I move the monster in a way that maybe, oh, you should have not faced it this way. Um, I play to the odds. Uh, that's the best way of me to say it. And I know I've compared other people in my responses to poker. The, the blue savior died because the first card in the AI deck, see, so I get it. I don't play optimally, so I had the, the antelope, and I always face it towards the survivors, so that way, even if it does eat something, at least it will still, uh, you know, do diabolical and run towards the survivors, so at least I could attack it. Normally, something's going to be out of range, and if something does cause the, uh, the antelope to run towards the survivor, because it, it drew a card that either has double move, that's happened before, or it draws a card that uh, doesn't cause it to graze right away, I still make it so the tank will be the closest target, but not in the path of Diabolical if he does graze. Then I also make it so a survivor is also, you know, not the worst survivor is the farthest. Because there's all there's cards that will target the farthest survivor as well. So the blue, to be fair, the blue saver died to a card that when I drew didn't cause the antelope to graze on the first turn. Caused him to double move or move in some, in some manner without grazing, and then caused him to target a random survivor in range. So, the, that must I think that's probably the only card. Again, I don't study the AI deck after looking at I could have gone through, studied the AI deck, and go, okay, I have to remember this one specific card and this one specific outcome, so I have to plan for it. I don't do that. Um, and again, that doesn't make me the best player, because I don't know every single... I play to experience, and I play to mathematical odds. I play to statistics. Statistically speaking, it was unlikely that that thing would have moved over, targeted, or moved, not grazed, and then targeted a random survivor. That, so, yes. To be fair, on that AI card, I could have then dashed, which someone then pointed out. 100% accurate. Uh, that was, that's true. But even if that were the, the case, it would then need to have hit me in the head location because I'm wearing the rawhide headband and it was terrible. And then, not only that, I would then need to fail on the head thing. So it has a 1 in 6 chance of hitting me in the head from Obdice. So even if I didn't dash, then it needs to attack me. Then I need to roll a 1 in 6 chance of it hitting me in the head. Then I need to roll another 1 in 6 chance, or one in f or a 4 in 10 chance of me dying on the head severe injury. Either way. Statistically speaking, it's very unlikely that I die, but who okay, cares? So I play it out. I play the game as it is. I just play it out. I play through it. I still did well, surprisingly well, for when I lost the survivor right away, because the blue savior in that video was the person who was using the bow, and usually my bow user is the person who garners the tons of hits and wounds, but it is what it is. So I'm not the best player. 
<laughs> I don't think I'm terrible. <laughs> and again, that's why I always welcome as many comments as possible. Uh, engage me any way you can. I love to hear it. I love to be, you know, shown that how not optimally I am playing. Again, and as, as I respond to most people, I do use poker as an example. I'm the type of person who would bet a straight, even if they're like, you know, just, I'm just going to do a quick poker analysis. So let's say, you know, after you're playing uh, five, five card stud, you get the, uh, uh, what is it? As the flop, the river, and the turn. Turn card comes up. It's a straight. I don't have the nuts straight. I may have the, you know, the low end straight. I'm going to bet even though I know I could lose to the high end straight. I'm not going to fold the hand. That's the type of player I am. And if I bet into somebody who has the high end straight, what is it? Like a, there's a 12% chance of that happening, I think, or eight, um, depending on what it is. Or, you know, betting a flush into someone who could have uh, quads. I'm going to still do it because, you know, whatever. <laughs> That's just the type of player I am, because the likelihood is it's not going to happen, and I'm not going to lay it down just because there's a possibility, a very slim, slight possibility. And that's how I play a lot of board games. Um, and yeah, it is reckless, and it does cause me to make suboptimal plays. I don't play optimally. And then when it does happen, it's like, oh, look, you should have known that was going to happen. And yeah, bad beats. They happen. <laughs> Maybe that's why I have a high tolerance to BS. I don't mind bad beats. They happen. I'm aware of it. Um, so with that said, again, sorry so much for the delay. Uh, I do have other stuff planned. As I said, I spent some of my free time doing some other things, uh, getting ready very surprisingly uh, for one of the other series I tried starting up on this channel. I know some people assume that's where my, uh, my name came from. And they're right from that game. Uh, I think that series failed to catch on and start up because I did, it was my fault. I did a bad job explaining it. So I have played that game <laughs> a lot by myself, uh, testing it out to make sure everything would work. And I think I'm going to try that again. So that will be coming up. And again, for the Townsfolk Tussle things, awesome. Uh, still time as of recording this. You can still back it. And I highly suggest you do. It's a great game. So, with all that said, let's get started. That was the new intro. That was the intro. I'm not doing. Normally, I set it up, record it all afterwards. Straight right through intro. We're going right to gameplay. Right from the intro. No cuts. How about that? So I just grab my dice. We've got uh, two people to level up. I've got them right here. We've got Luke and Dustin uh, to level up from the last showdown. So we will get into that right away. I will go right now to first how about we do Luke who's hitting age two uh, get out my cheat sheet here again uh, you can't see it because I think it's very reflective maybe I'll try down here but I've printed off like just a it's an Excel paper pretty much it's all the age tables into disabled bull tables inside tables overwhelming darkness tables cheat sheets <laughs> gotta have cheat sheets the other side of this cheat sheet it's all the severe injuries and the brain trauma so that is how I play so I always keep the sheet sheet by or by me on hand. So let's go ahead, Luke. Where is my pencil? Here we go. Luke going up first. Aging. That is an eleven. Uh, what did I say? Uh, both these guys are age two. So age two, eleven is permanent strength for Luke. Let's just go Dustin because it's also the most probable is going to be the permanent strength. And yeah, it looks like permanent strength again. What is that? A thirteen. Uh, 13 on age 2 is also permanent strength. So Luke will get himself up to 6 strength. So Luke is at 6 strength and Dustin is now at 5 strength. So again, I did this with them first um, because now that we start... Um, this is going to be Lantern Year 28. Now, first we do the Settlement Event, but then we have to do Warm Virus right away. So I'm just going to mark Lantern Year 28. We've now started it. So we are fighting the Level 3 Kingsman next. So we do the Warm Virus, which I have already laid out here, but I do need to do a Settlement. And depending on how those would have went, 
would have maybe influenced how I did uh, the warm virus, who I would have selected to be the host. Uh, it didn't. The plus one strength is not a concern. Um, so that didn't ver factor in. Had it been something else, maybe it would have factored in to me choosing them had I gotten, what is age two? I think there's a chance I could have gotten uh, speed or a movement. So had I rolled really bad, I would have gotten plus one movement and that would have maybe made me influence them to pick them for the people with the warm virus, but it didn't. Uh, the other things I thought about for warm virus were I went, the people who have harvestmen, uh, the fighting art gain, gives them movement. So those people, not the best because they'd lose the fighting art. So they'd lose the movement. Uh, anyway, while well, talking to who I ended up choosing for uh, more virus. So let's go ahead and we'll roll. Oh, I usually do the roll, the red dice. Uh, five. Um, oops, I have this just in case. So we only have the three returning survivors, which are uh, Aurora, Dustin, and Luke. So the fifth card down. One, two, three, four. It's the fifth card down. Okay, let's open Maw. So with open maw, a large stone face, a large stone face slowly opens its mouth. Survivors prove their bravery by running into it. Lingering effects. Uh, then this chart here. I don't think I'm going to be doing any of this. Pretty much, I don't really know what. So th this is over. There's nothing happened with the survive with this. Uh, we might end up doing it. I'd caught co it cost me an endeavor. I don't really know if I want to do any of this. Iron will is awesome. But uh, everything else is just not the best. I mean, I could get random vermin and maybe do... Oh, I need this out still. I could get random vermin. Uh, but either way, good enough. So now we do welcome... Uh, uh, not the, yeah, welcome the guest, which is the warm virus here. So, warm virus... This is from Caressa Dying Last Showdown. You add, so this will be the new person to get the Sleeping Virus Flower. So here's Sleeping Virus Flower, and you see you add Warm Virus. So they will get the Sleeping Virus Flower, which becomes cursed, but they gain plus one permanent luck because the new person would have to carry this on them since it's cursed, um, which would go into this gear grid, which you can see it would always go here for the cursed person because they have to carry a lantern. So this is where the sleeping virus flower would go. And normally, or last time, uh, this went here, the monster grease, which I will build back. But this is the person, they were the bow user. That's where the sleeping virus flower always goes. So with that, it will be Caressa, who is the guest, because she's the one who died. And all right, so a warm virus. You nominate a survivor that can consume. We did that. Um, we are nominating Madison, is who we are nominating. Now, Madison had, um, she's two away from aging, which is, I get one more hunt left, so I'll be able to take her out. She'll be able to get her second age. That was one of the factors. I wanted someone who can, uh, still hunt and maybe age up one more time. So that's why I picked her. There are plenty of other people I could have given it to, but I still need... Uh, people to fight so i we'll get into it <laughs> um her stats pretty much i don't mind losing her stats she's just gonna she had no, no real good fighting arts or disorders so here we go uh the host presses the virus flower to their mouth its delicate petals changing color to match their flesh a cozy and, and inspired warm fills their being well i gotta get a dice so we'll have to roll uh, and they gently push the flower by its stem down their throat. So now we roll on here. They're down the throat. So here we go. Uh, seven. So seven. If the sunlight is animated sculpture, which we has, or since we have, <laughs> the host creates a grand throne from debris and trash. Completing it, they announce one day the king will come to claim this. The message sends a ripple of dread through the settlement. Departing survivors gain plus five insanity and a random fighting art. So, 
Um, hmm. I'll have to remember to do this. So departing survivors get plus five insanity in a random fighting art. I haven't decided who's going to depart yet. Uh, kind of have, but kind of haven't. One of them I know will be Victor um, because he's got two parts of the of the regal gear. Uh, I'm going to try to get Shaw to depart because he's also got regal gear. But either way, so I'll have to remember that we're doing that. Next, we welcome the guest. Uh, as the flower is digested, the virus enters the host's bloodstream and travels to their brain. The host experiences a state of euphoria as viral genomes are injected into the cells of their prefrontal cortex. The host feels as if a satisfying itch within their skull has finally been scratched. That sensation is the last thing they experience as their original self. The host's brain is rewritten, replacing the sum of their life with that of the guests. The host loses all fighting arts, disorders, abilities, and impairments. So, everything on pretty much... Uh, where's Madison? That's all this here. So, she's going to lose Rhythm Chaser. She's going to lose Leader. She's going to lose Ghostly Beauty, which I wanted to try to get rid of off of her anyway. Uh, she's not going to be a tinkerer anymore. Then, what else? And that's it. Then they gain the guests' fighting arts, disorders, positive attributes, and weapon proficiency levels, including type. So, uh, she was trying to be an axe weapon proficient, but she hasn't done anything. <laughs> so with that said, she is now a bow master. So Madison, she's going to be the one who ate the sleeping virus host now. Sleeping virus flowers host. Write that here. Okay, so that's the end of a warm virus. Let's put this back. So, as it says, uh, she can retain her name, which she will. She's going to still be uh, Madison. She's just gaining, how did it put it? The host brain is rewritten, replacing the sum of their life with that of the guests. Okay, so. Basically, Madison is just going to live Caressa's life now. It's like Caressa never died. Mad she just takes over Madison's brain. So, uh, I'll have to change the artwork for Madison. So when you, the you'll see it happen, not now obviously, but in editing, I will change. I'll change the artwork for Madison, make her a little look a little bit more like Caressa, since it basically is her is Caressa anyway. So. That makes her now, she will become, I'll just read this off, there's going to be a graphic. <laughs> so Caressa will just take over the body of Madison. With that said, Madison will gain one more accuracy, bringing her accuracy to three. Seven strength, bringing her strength to ten. She'll keep her one evasion, she'll gain two extra luck, and she'll gain one extra speed. She'll gain bow master, she'll just gain all of that. Um, she's going to gain Unconscious Fighter, which means she takes seven bleed tokens to be killed. She'll gain Propulsion Drive, and she'll gain Vengeance. She'll lose Rhythm Chaser, and she'll lose, uh, lose Leader. She's going to lose Ghostly Beauty, which is fine. She's not going to gain any disorders in their place. She's going to lose Tinkerer, but then she's going to just gain Tinkerer right back. She's also going to become Prepared. And then she'll gain the sleeping virus also. Now, with that said, she doesn't trigger bolt. Even though she is prepared, she can still trigger bolt later. So, with all that said, I'll adjust the papers and do that. But the graphic should have been adjusted already. All right. Now, we've done sleeping virus flower. Let's put this over here. She'll have to do all that. All right, next note. Now let's start going to the actual settlement. So, I didn't get enough stuff to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> I did not get enough um, bone. And I don't have enough iron. So, with that said, I can't make the lantern uh, helmet. Which I wanted to do, but I can't. Um... 
So we're going to need to save a lot of things. The good thing about it is the Kingsman, he doesn't really do... He doesn't clear the storage if we lose. He just destroys a pot. So keeping our storage isn't that big of a... Like a... It's not a bad thing. Granted, I could draw something in here that could destroy a lot of the storage, but that's a risk I'm going to have to take, and I've already dis discussed how I feel about taking risks. I would have maybe one of these settlement event cards would kill storage. I'm willing to take that risk. So, with all that said, uh, I do need to spend one organ, so we'll spend the... Uh, what is this? Muscly gums here from the antelope. We'll spend muscly gums and we're going to just make another monster grease to replace the one we lost. So with all that done, now, so let's talk about totals here. I want to make the, uh, so the thing with the outfit, or thing with the outfit keyword is you can, uh, the outfit keyword means it can be part of a gear set even though it's not listed on the high, on the armor set. So I want to get the oxidized lantern glaive to put on the person who's using the warlord armor. Um, because with the warlord armor, it has a screaming horns, which is fine and all, but you know, I'd like to not I'd like to get that off of that person. So it doesn't affect them. Uh, and the, the Oxidized Lantern Glaive is just... Our Lantern Helmet's awesome anyway. I forget exactly what it does. It is, makes it so you're not affected by deaf things, but you're not deaf. I think is what it is. I forget exactly how it's written. So I'm still going for that. But man, does it cost a lot of stuff, and I did not have enough to do it. So, to make the Oxidized Lantern Helm, we need 2 iron, 14 bone, 3 leather, 3 organ, a black lichen, and 1... Uh, cocoon membrane. So two iron, fourteen bone, three leather. Um, three organs, black leg, and yeah, we don't have all that. Um, so we're gonna have to save it all. That means we're not gonna be spending those things. does mean we have a lot of leather kind of left to spend. So we have seven leather as it is right now, so it means we have four leather to spend. And I think, so for the four leather, I think we're just going to upgrade. Uh, the bow user doesn't really have the best gear here. He's rawhide headband, rawhide boots, rawhide gloves. I think I'm just going to spend the, a couple leather to make uh, leather boots, because I think they're better, right? I don't want to have a full leather set here. Um, yeah, leather boots let you move an extra space at the end of your act if you have the two puzzle pieces, which I could get, uh, maybe, somehow. Not with the current gear set. I think I would need to make the gloves, right? Yeah, I need to make the... Well, the, the bracers are just better than the rawhide gloves. So when you depart, you gain one survival. With the leather bracers, you gain two survival. So the leather bracers are just better overall than the, the rawhide gloves. So I think I'll make those to replace the rawhide gloves. Uh, the rawhide boots, the leather boots are just better. Uh, so we'll do that as well. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I could also make another rather leather round shield. Uh, beacon shield, I could not make that as it is right now, but I could save all... My, I'm just contemplating saving everything and fighting one more antelope again with the crit user now and just get it, trying to get the whole deck again and then just seeing where we are. That's kind of what I think here. And then just make stuff for the Gold Smoke Knight. Now, look, I, the Gold Smoke Knight, I'm a little underpowered for the Gold Smoke Knight. Um, I don't know what exactly I'm going to do for him. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, yeah, I'm a little underpowered from where I'd like to be for him. Because of the deaths we've had. It's not that my stats are bad. The stats are okay. 
and the gear is okay. The gear, I, I, I feel okay with the gear, and I feel, feel okay with the stats, but I haven't really gotten very good survivors uh, and fighting arts to fight him. Um, they didn't really fall where I wanted them to. I had some people that I thought would do it a little bit better, but they didn't. So that kind of... Or I had some people that would have been better, but they died. So a lot of this is kind of suck. <laughs> uh, and I haven't been drawing uh, the ticks to make someone who's awesome for evasion. Uh, so we might just save all kinds of stuff. And just see where it gets us. That's, that's really where I'm leaning towards. <laughs> I know that sounds bad, but... Aside from upgrading to get rid of the rawhide on the uh, the boots, I mean, I could make a leather shield to get rid of the knuckle shield. Because the knuckle shield is not the best. Make a leather shield to do a little bit better. Uh, I would like to make the beacon shield, however, but I'm really short on bones. Hmm. Yeah, I'm really contemplating on just saving every single resource because the Kingsman's not gonna not gonna destroy the settlement. He's not gonna destroy all the resources. Uh I should just thinking of just gathering iron and having kids. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Uh, just making some survivors and seeing what happens here. Um, but with that said, let's try to cure... Or first things first. Let's try to cure Fear of the Dark off of Shaw here. And where is it? I need... Here it is, Barber Surgeon. So... Yep, for Barber Surgeon, here we go. Trying for a three or a six to cure a relief, so spend one endeavor. Send Shaw over the Barber Surgeon, try to cure his Fear of the Dark, so he can go out and fight the Kingsman, since he's already got one of the Regal sets. Okay, that's a ten. It's great. Uh, gain a random disorder and one random fighting art. Okay, so he's going to gain a random disorder and a random fighting art. Let's go ahead and do that now. Didn't really want this to happen. <laughs> Just kind of wanted to cure his fear of the dark, but random fighting arts, okay. This one. Unconscious fighter. Seven bleeding tokens to kill you. So, that's what we got. Unconscious fighter. Seven bleeding tokens to kill you. And let's go ahead. Uh, pencil. Where did I put it? Here it is. So, Shaw is now an unconscious fighter. Maybe I'll just gain a whole bunch of disorders and be able to replace. Wow, he's, he's also got... Last man standing. Sudden bleed. Uh, Reign of disorder. Yeah, I mean, he's turning, making himself pretty good. Uh, come on, like, immortal or something. <laughs> come on, let's get something good. Okay, random disorder, this one. Oh, squeamish. That's like the worst thing that could have happened now. So, we can't depart with stinky gear. Okay, can't depart with stinky gear. Okay. What is it? Stats would cause you to become stinky, you lose all your survival. Well, that's fine. Okay, so that's the fighting art and the disorder. Okay, let's go again. Come on, three or a six. Are you kidding me? Okay. This, is, this might be the worst way I've ever cured a disorder. Or the oddest way, by just gaining three more disorders to replace it. Yeah, he needs one more disorder, and uh, he'll go ahead and replace Fear of the Dark by itself. Okay. Oh, this was another endeavor. Okay, here we go. 
A uh, Berserker. Once per showdown, you may spend it to suffer frenzy. <sighs> so, Berserker. Survival to gain frenzy. Or, well, it's, you spend an action. Bash and frenzy. Okay, another disorder. This is the weirdest, weirdest way of curing a disorder. So all this is all mute too, or moot, because of uh, the fact he's still a spear of the dark, so I still can't even depart. Oh no. Well, now it's not even worth it. Because I just got achymorphia, or whatever. Achymophobia. I can't depart with uh, swords, axes, uh, spears, or daggers. So he'd have to be the person with the bow now. Huh. This is terrible. Has to use bow. It's pretty much what, or fist and tooth. So he has to use fist and tooth or bow now. Okay, um, let's try one more time. Like to, I'd really like to cure fear of the dark. A two. What's the two? Shuffle the intracranial hemorrhage brain, which I don't think does anything, right? Severe injury to the head, or yeah, it's to the head, right? Intracranial hemorrhage. You can no longer gain or you any survival. This injury is permanent and can be recorded once. Gain one bleeding. So he can't gain, or what is it? He can't use or gain survival. So that sucks for him. So now I need a seven. Oh my gosh. Okay. So using it again here. Hey. I cured Fear of the Dark. Okay, now I have to try to cure an cranial hemorrhage. <laughs> Uh, okay, so he gained another intracranial hemorrhage. This is terrible. Oh my gosh. Well, now I gain another fighting art. This is terrible. Should have just had kids and then just wasted the kids. Then trying to save this person who is Fear of the Dark just so he can depart since he already had the regal part of his gear. This is a terrible choice. All I need to do is roll a 3 or a 6. 30% chance and I've rolled a 10 twice in a row. Like, not very good at rolling what I need. Okay, another fighting art. Probably going to get rid of Berserker. That's like the worst one. Double dash. That's actually a really good one. Okay. Double dash. Uh, you can spend a thing. To, so, spend an action to gain another movement, which is good. So, yeah, I'm going to get rid of Berserker for that. Uh, double dash. So, action to gain movement. And a reign of disorder. Oh, man. Vermin Obsession, which is fine. There's not going to be any bugs on the Kingsman. Here's Vermin Obsession. Okay. Vermin Obsession. Um... Well, I've cured Fear of the Dark now, but... I, now I need to cure an cranial hemorrhage. <sighs> this is terrible. <laughs> this is really terrible. Okay, what's cure an cranial hemorrhage? So it's like a seven through a nine will do it. That's all I need to do. 
Uh, seven or a nine. Did I pick up the dice? Well. Okay. So, seven or a nine. Please, 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 can I do it? Okay. That's fine. So I don't have a cranial hemorrhage. That co I had. That was the worst. That was the worst thing. <sighs> it was the worst. That was that was seriously the worst. That wasn't worth it at all. I don't think. <laughs> that wasn't worth it at all. I was hoping to just. That wasn't worth it at all. That wasn't worth it at all. What am I going to do now? So, have kids, I guess? Uh, where is augury? Ugh. I could just use a love juice, too, if I wanted to, but... Here's augury. Okay. Ugh. Well, this would cause me to lose store or resources from the settlement. Do I even want to auger, then? Um, so what is what I need to do? I need to spend a leather, so it cost me two leather to make the leather bracers, or, well, leather and a hide, which is fine. And then to make the boots would be another leather and a hide. Right, that's what I said I wanted to replace. The gloves and the boots. Yeah, might as well do that. So gloves and the boots, that would cost me one endeavor to leather make again, which I'll do. Um, okay, so leather making, and I'll just turn all this into leather because they can be spent interchangeably. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven more leather, which I'll immediately spend four of to make the leather boots and leather bracers, leaving me with three more leather or a total of 10 leather in storage. So that will be 10 leather in storage. So we have 10 leather in storage now. Okay, uh, one endeavor left, which I guess I'll just do augury, or I should just archive the I just archive the love juice. Whatever. I'll just archive the love juice. Because I don't think I need many more organs for anything. Okay, archiving love juice, and I'll try then I'll try to get perfect strike or perfect eye with someone We're using sculpture. Maybe. Or I I probably just need to get as much broken lanterns as I can. Um Yeah, I'll probably make as much broken lanterns as I can. I probably won't even auger. Okay, so let's we'll spend the love juice. Uh, I can roll two dice. Or... How many dice do I? It's two. Two. So this one, this one. Uh, I can... Intimacy table. Here we go. Where is it? Intimacy, I can roll two, take the highest. Uh, nine. Um, oh man, see, I could have had a uh, savior, which would have been great. But on a nine plus, uh, it's going to be two twins. Okay. So twins with this. Let's just go ahead and make the twins now, I guess. I thought I had extra sheets. These them extra sheets. Yes, extra sheets right here. Okay, so we'll have two two twins. Oh, I forgot to nominate who the parents even were. Uh, I don't even know who the parents are going to be. I didn't look. <laughs> um, I'll have to look to see who the parents will be. But I'm not going to be taking anything from any of the parents because it doesn't matter. Um, right, I don't think I even have anyone who has any kind of axe that even passed down. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh well, 
I forgot to look who the parents will be. I'll edit it in the, uh, <laughs> in the graphics who the parents are. So let's just go ahead. So they'll born with, because, where's my innovations? Innovations, innovations. Where is my innovation deck? Is it over here? Ah, is this the innovation deck? Yeah. So, uh, I might do sculpture. I'll take that out. I'll probably do it. So, because we have, um, well, we have Protect the Young, uh, Accept Darkness, no, where is it? So we do have pottery, so he's just going to break that pottery, which is whatever. Everyone's born with two understanding, two hunt and experience. Or three understanding, because of graves. Uh, so three understanding, two hunt experience, and two courage. One accuracy, one strength, one evasion. Yeah. And I thought we were barbaric. Yeah. So we're also barbaric. So it's going to be one accuracy, two strength... So, everybody's born with one accuracy, two strength, one evasion. One accuracy, two strength, one evasion. Three understanding. Two courage. Two hunt experience. Alright, here we go. Let's see who these people are, or who they turn out to be. First, we do understanding, so that makes them a tinkerer. Where's understanding? Uh, insight, settlement phase, they're tinkerers. And for the first person, they got a 10, plus one permanent strength, so they're a 3. And second person is a 5, isn't that? I get one endeavor back, so we're back up to 2. Okay? That's the insight for both people. Now let's do age for both of them. Age one, eight for person one, random fighting art, and uh, 18 for person two, which is a permanent accuracy. Okay, so fighting art for person one. Let's get something good. And then I'm thinking I'm gonna try for timeless eye with someone. I don't know who needs time Messiah. I don't even think I have sneak attack with anybody anymore. Or anything that requires perfect hits. Um, I mean, I know the Oxidized Glaive does, but... Uh, Orator of Death. It's such a bad one. Here's a... Okay, Orator of Death. So this person A is an Orator of Death. It's not terrible, but... Uh, whatever. Okay. Okay, so, these are the two people, okay, now, who needs Timeless Eye? Who would actually benefit from Timeless Eye? I need pretty much anybody who's going to be using the axe, the glaives, so... Um, and I have a lot of people who are just like very specific purpose, <laughs> very specific purpose now, or are just really bad now. Uh, doesn't look like any of those people. I guess Madison, right? She might. Right? Yeah, might as well try to get time aside with Mad. No, well, she doesn't really need time aside. Well, I guess. No, she doesn't really need time aside. Um, 
Who am I going to fight with at the end of the day here? I mean, in all honesty, it's probably going to be Aurora who I'll fight with at the end of the day against the green, the Gold Smoke Knight. Um, what about you guys? Not really worth getting Timeless Eye for on any of them. A bunch of dead people. <laughs> uh... Yeah, we'll get it with. We might as well just get it with Lucas, I guess. Okay, Lucas. Let's try to do sculpture. Um, Lucas spending a thing on a six plus, he can gain timeless eye from our sculpture. Uh, that's not it. Second one, Lucas. Uh, he does. So Lucas will just gain Timeless Eye from the sculpture, and Timeless Eye just is expands your perfect hit range from nine or nine to ten. So Lucas, Timeless Eye Fighting Arts, because he will probably go fight. Uh, maybe the Kingsman. Don't know yet. But if he does, now he's got time to sigh. I don't know who, the, who they're going to be, so I have to remember that, that they're going to gain fighting arts, whoever departs. Well, I mean, I know it's going to be Shaw and Victor here. For sure, they're going to be departing because they've got pieces of the Regal gear, which is why I wanted to send them out anyway, because that way if they kill it, it doesn't matter. They already had Regal gear, they were going to die, and I'm not poisoning some people. So... That's it. I, th I think I'm just going to save a bunch of stuff. Uh, so what did I make? I made... So the rawhide gloves. So I just made... Um, leather gloves, leather boots. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff here. I guess what I'll do is I'll just put up graphics of my gear and you guys can make suggestions because I don't know what I'm going to do. So this is going to be the tank probably with the leather gear oxidized beacon shield uh and the flower knight badge he's probably going to be the one who tanks the gold smoke knight so that's that gear set uh then we've got the screaming antelope gear set which which is a knuckle shield which i can get a leather shield to replace it that'll be one of the things i should do just to get rid of the knuckle shield uh, other than that, I don't know. Oh, the other thing is, yeah, I need, so I do need to put a lantern where the pickaxe is. So, yeah, I was wrong about this with the bone, with the, uh, oxidized lantern shields did not gain the lant, or oxidized lantern glaze did not gain lantern keyword. It was just a lantern halberd. So... I could have sworn he thought... I thought somewhere I saw that the, the Glaives got them as well, but I guess not. So I'll have to put a lantern uh, with the Glaive. So there'll have to be one there. Same goes with the Warlord armor set. So I'll have to get rid of the... Uh, probably the Luck Charm. Um, yeah, I'll probably have to get rid of the Luck Charm on the Warlord armor set. To replace it with a another lantern, and then finally the bow armor set, which I've just improved now to having leather. Uh, I'll have to. So for the actual fight against the um, lantern or against the gold smoke knight the actual fight will have this virus flower in it so again there'll be graphics up <laughs> of all this stuff uh the other thing i could do is maybe instead of using 
Uh, oxidized lantern glaze, remember we do have a calcified Zimbato. But other than that, I don't really know what else to make. I think I'm just going to make another uh, uh, round leather shield to replace the knuckle shield. And then replace or add the oxidized lantern glaive or oxidized lantern helmet to the uh, Warlord armor set. I think that will be just about it. Yep, that's just about it. So I'll just save all this stuff. I'll write it all down. I don't know what else there really is to do. And next, after this, uh, if there's any... I'll, so in storage, we have a whole bunch of stuff in storage. A um, whole bunch of stuff in storage. <laughs> we have everything we need except for a couple of bones. I think we're like three or four bones off from being able to make the lantern helm. So we're going to have one more hunt, which will probably just be an antelope and just, yeah, that'll be that. So we have all kinds of stuff in storage. Plenty of stuff. I could make anything. If you have any suggestions as what to make for these gear grids before the gold smoke night, the only thing I'm short on is iron, which after the Kingsman fight, I'll just probably just do uh, all nothing but getting broken lanterns from the exhausted lantern horde. And maybe getting some more people perfect, perfect time, or timeless eye, I mean. So, other than that, thank you so much. Sorry for the delay. Uh, I don't know if things are going to get better. Time-wise, I still have, you know, have, I had to plan my visits uh, accordingly with their rules and guidelines and places at hospitals. So, unfortunately, I'll just have to plan them for my time off. And that's just how I'm going to spend my time off. So... Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next Lantern Year.